Welcome. Uh, today I'm going to do the midweek magic, which is standard. Uh, so I'm going to give the Forgotten Pilgrims deck another run out. Now this is based on uh, Yimin Ji's Worlds deck. Uh, it was the only Mardu deck at Worlds. Uh, it ha it's running Rite of Oblivion, which is... Um, a card I am quite fond of. Um, so obviously I've I've made a few changes with respect to Brothers War. So I've popped in. I did have three LS Ilkor. I've dropped two of those so I can try out Razor Lash Transmogrant. So this is a three one for two mana. It can't block, and it can come back from the graveyard which could, could be quite handy, and it can come back quite cheaply if your opponent has four non-basics. So that, yeah, maybe that's good. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll try and go for the throat instead of a Infernal Grasp, see so if we run into lots of artifact creatures. Uh, I'm sure that'll be fine, though. And I put in a Citizen's Crowbar. That's, well, that's from New Capanna, but I thought this will, you, you're probably going to need this in quite a few matchups, there's um, some nasty artifacts going around, so chuck in one of these. I think this is a very good card with Right of Oblivion, because it gives you a citizen token and a crowbar to sacrifice, so, you know, two things for two mana is not bad. Um, I'm tempted to play more of these, to be honest. What else? I went up, managed to go up to three wedding announcements. Um, I have added, yeah, dropped a bank buster in favor of Transmogrant's Crown. So this is the equipment that people are saying is a bit like Skull Clamp. So when your creature dies, you get to draw a card. So that's pretty. That's pretty good. Um, other things I've added: Legions to Ashes has come in. This is a uh, new removal card. Exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls. And all tokens that player controls with the same name as that permanent. So sometimes this can be a sweeper for their tokens. Or it's some, a lot of the time it's just a three mana removal spell. So I think the flexibility makes this quite good. And it's exiling things as well. Um... And finally, yeah, I, I did have Ao the Dawn Sky. I'm getting bored of playing Ao, so I've dropped dropped him for over the top. So this is uh, I noticed there's quite a few uh, recommendations on YouTube for people playing over the top decks. So it's it's one of these very splashy cards that lets you play your entire deck um, in one go if you have enough permanents already in play. So, you know, treasure tokens, blood tokens, and things like that. Uh, yeah, non-land permanence, it, work, it works off of. You look at the, the top, it, you, you add up the number of non-land permanents, you, put, um, you reveal that many cards from the top of the library, and you put all permanents just directly into play. So, seems quite good. Uh, probably better to, you know, build a deck around this card rather than just chuck it into any any deck but in this case i'm just going to chuck it into this deck and see what happens uh, i've managed to improve the land base since the last time i played it because i managed to um i wild carded my crimson vow lands you see so we've cut down the number of tap lands by about two or three so that's quite good uh yeah and we'll just, uh, ah, see, I thought I'd chosen my deck, but apparently not. There we go. So I picked edit deck, that's why. So I guess we'll play to three wins in this, in this bit. And then I will, I'll go into standard uh, best of three to try and get my fourth win. Assuming we can get three wins here, but uh, hopefully we can. OK, 
Okay, we've got some early removal there. Now, I think what you're supposed to do here is play the Scoured Barons, because you never know, you might top deck loads of land, and then you'd be able to cycle Sanders Lounge. We top deck to the land. Okay, let's, let's keep going with the land plan. I mean, that would have been a perfect turn to play a tap land, to be honest. But um, we'll see how this works out. Oh well, we drew another Sanders Lounge. Well, I've got to play Shattered Sanctum, and uh, it's a choice. Do you go Wedding Announcement or Fable? That's that's the choice this uh, deck gives you, of course. Um, I think I like Wedding Announcement even more than Fable. That said. Well, one of them's going to get... Oh, I can't play Fable. What am I talking about? I do not have red mana. So, yeah, I have to play for Wedding Announcement. It doesn't get countered. It gets impulsed. What are the chances my opponent is playing Blue Tempo here? Probably quite high. He doesn't play anything. Okay, so yeah. We have to play the Tap Sanders Lounge. So, never mind. We get punished a little bit. We can't actually play anything this turn. But I tried something new. I tried uh, not playing the Sanders Lounge early. We will get to cycle this one, of course. It's just our bad luck. We drew another one. Yeah, that's getting bounced, that's fair enough. It's gonna slow me down. Right, there is the Haughty Gin. And it's already a 5-4, so the cut down is not gonna cut it. So we will cycle that. Okay. Now, Rite of Oblivion would play around Spell Pierce, but it would cost me a permanent. Legions to Ashes wouldn't cost me a permanent. But could get spell pierced. Um, or we hold up mana for Wandering Emperor. Or we just go ahead and play Fable. But uh, we're going to die quite quickly to Haughty Gen, I think. So, okay, we're going to play around Spell Pierce. Does he have it? Feel like good as timer. It's a good a time as any to try to tr to try something because he's going to have access to four untapped mana from this point. But yeah, he had it. In other words, right. 
Right, so it's got three mana now. Another right for Oblivion, so we've got Wandering Emperor, we could try. Try Legions to Ashes. We could try Right of Oblivion again, just in case all he's got is a two mana spell. Two, uh, two mana power sink, I mean. Uh, so, with that argument, it kind of says Right of Oblivion is the, is the, the correct choice. So he'll still be able to do a one mana protection spell and cast another card, draw the card. But he's got, yeah, he's got it. He's got the second slip out the back, of course. They always do, don't they? And we just try the last removal card. So I don't think it matters whether I try Legions to Ashes or Wandering Emperor. Yeah, he did have a spell pierce. Great. Yeah, it's magic is just a simple game sometimes. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the removal package for the the world's decks was not too concerned with blue tempo. I mean, that's what the uh, best is best of three. Obviously, that's what the signboard is for. And I think there was one success. That said, there was one quite successful blue tempo deck. That I think that I think it went uh, four and one in the standard portion. But it, it, I'll tell you one thing, I played around Spell Pierce. It did turn out he had a Spell Pierce, but there you go. I didn't have uh, three removal spells that could uh, play around it. Okay, we'll get to see some uh, Brothers War cards. We'll play the Razor Lash Transmogrant. And he already has one non-basic land, which is pretty exciting. I feel like it's going to get bounced. Okay. Um, we could try equipping a Transmogrant's Crown. I didn't want to run out the graveyard trespasser just yet when there's nothing in the graveyard to take out. And a, a lot of the white decks are running um, sort of reanimator strategies. Let's see, is he going to kill it or bounce it? Oh, he's not going to do either. Five damage. Oak. Guess we swing in. Bank Buster looks like the best play here. Okay. It's marched, so 
I buy. Don't even draw a card off it. Uh, I will go for the bank buster because I like drawing cards. Takanuma, I don't want to miss a land drop, so I'm going to play this, and it uh, means my trespasser can I can uh, play it, and I'm playing around uh, the two the p two point power sink, uh, so we'll get this guy into play. I'll keep the mana up for uh, our card draw. We could equip Transmogrant's Crown. But he already loses uh, card. He has to spend two cards to try and target the Trespasser and kill it. I suppose I could have um, crewed my bank buster and swung in, but I'm swinging into four open mana. That might not be such a good idea. And it's Teferi. So expect to see a lot of this card. It's absolutely broken beyond belief. For the sake of the future, I will defend the past. Okay. Drawing a card with it, okay. Another mystery song. Puts him up to loyalty five. Okay, uh, guess what? Transmogrant's crown could be equipped to the trespasser. Uh, I'm gonna make my land drop. I'm going to equip Transmogrin's Crown. Swing for five. And if I do nothing, of course, I can switch it to uh, night time. So I think uh, I want to do that. Exile two cards from graveyards, which is pretty nice. Okay, let's draw at the end of the turn. I've got five open mana. He hasn't played a Wandering Emperor. 
Uh, now, we've got Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I could discard this planes. Maybe six landers is good enough. Through the bank buster and swing in. Not sure what to expect here. I would have thought he'd use Wandering Emperor last turn. Bye bye. There's the Wandering Emperor, okay. It means she doesn't get attacked. That's the important thing. Okay. Of course, it's another exile effect, so he doesn't. Um, I, don't, I still don't draw off the Transmogulant's crown, but. What can you do? More damage through. Um, I'm not in a hurry to kill the Wandering Emperor. I think I'm going to play Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I think uh, Transmogrant's Crown should get equipped onto something. And I, yeah, let's tap out. Let's play a Citizen's Crowbar as well. We are kind of playing into farewell quite quite badly now I think about it. And he's on uh, five mana. That might not have been the best uh, play there, but I wonder if he's playing as a Lord Protector. It's a depopulate. Okay, fair enough. Could have been worse. I had a multicolored creature, so I drew off the citizen dying as well. So I did get two cards out of that. Remember your training. Remember what this deck has. I think I'm gonna discard those two lands. Yeah, Liaza forgotten Archangel. Okay. Uh, the good news is actually he's got the Harvester has three power. Uh, let's crew bank buster. Take out the Emperor. <clears throat> Try not to miss me. Okay, another fable, I think. Okay, that's negated. Uh, let's pop Transmogrant's Crown on the Harvester. Nightstone and Weakstone. Okay. To pop the Harvester. I think we might have an Urza on his way. My mistake. I'm 
very much mistaken. He's going to refill his hand. That makes a lot of sense as well. Angel of Wrath can come into play, do four damage, which is pretty good, I think. All oh, right, yeah, I've only got one white mana. Uh, oh dear, I can't play a planes. I think I might as well play this planes now. see two damage uh, four damage to the dome nine da uh, puts him on nine archangel can e yeah okay he's only got one blue mana okay okay yeah i can i can see a line of play here right castle kick it black kick it red And he can go face with it as well, which is nice. Good equip the crowbar, I suppose. I well, if he has something that gains life, then I'll feel silly. It'd just be a bounce spell. Okay, one victory. Ooh, Curse of Hospitality. Hmm. Can't say I've ever used it. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's good. Way of uh, giving everything you've, all your creatures trample. I suppose that's the. Uh, that's basically what it is. Oh, line of runes. Couple of fables. I wonder if we just discard over the top. It's not something you want in the opening hand, really. That's a good top deck. Unless we want to try and play it. Now, do we blow up the Harvester? Yes. We 
do many lands. Uh, let's let's try and play over the top this game. Okay, I guess we're playing this land. And I think this is a good bank buster turn. Gonna cast over the top, we need to keep making land drops. Okay, Fable. So he's making he's playing a deck very similar to mine. See, we didn't make the, la the land drop. Um, I could take a risk here. I will take a risk. Okay, we got punished. Uh, I think we just destroy evil then on the fable. Okay. Unfortunately, I think he gets rid of over the top. No. Fair enough. Gets rid of the more practical card. Knows I'm going to have to really get some lands to uh, cast over the top. Oh, another duress. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, Fable. Fable, guys. We hit a land drop. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, graveyard Trespasser. What's coming back? Blood Tide Harvester, almost certainly. Uh, yep. And then we're going to draw a card off that guy. And get a treasure, which puts us on six mana. Good top deck of land. Okay. I think we'll go for the goblin. We want to keep Trespasser on the board. If possible. Hey, right of Oblivion. Interesting. He's, he, I think he is playing the uh, the Yimin Shi deck, deck here. He just didn't hit any white mana. And he's discarding the other Tainted Adversary. Well, that works out just dandy for me, I think. Uh, we hit another land drop. Okay, now we know he's playing Duress. He could top deck a Duress, but is he really playing more than two in his deck? Um, if we over the top, we only ha we'll only have three permanents because we're going to use the treasure. So it's just like we we cast the top three spells in our deck if they're permanents. Which kind of sucks. Uh, if I set a Paragon though, I can put loads more trash on the table. I can uh, play, replay a Blood Tithe Harvester. And then I think through this and swing in. Trouble is, I think my opponent's probably going to concede. A I should I should have cast the over the top when I could when I uh, had the chance. Yeah, yeah. I misplayed because uh, I made my opponent concede.
graphic. Teferi who slows the sunset. Okay, this is the Teferi from Midnight Hunt. This is not the first copy of this Teferi that I have. This is, so, choose up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, and up to one target land. Untap the chosen permits you control, and tap the ones you don't control. You gain two life. Yeah, yeah, this is this is kind of interesting, especially with the... Um, uh, the artifact from Dominaria United that gives you five mana. Um, you've got a way of untapping it, which seems cool. So he's kind of cool with these uh, big mana ramp artifacts. I suppose creatures with uh, tap abilities as well. Uh, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library. Yeah, your standard card draw ability for minus two. With minus seven, you get an emblem with untap all permanents you control during each opponent's untap step. Hmm. And you draw a card during each opponent's draw step. Well, that's nice. Yeah, that's a, that seems like a reasonably... Uh, a reasonably powerful ter Teferi. Not not a ridiculous one. Playable, but not overpowered. Right, so next time I get over the top, I need I need to have a bit of fire discipline. Uh, I can't spend turns building up my board to get the best ever over the top. I think I've just got to f cast it the first the first turn it's available to cast. Uh, right, we have a two lander, but we do have bank buster. So I s and we're going second, so it, we're drawing an extra card. I say this is fine. Oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe not fine. Green with a one drop, aggressive one drop creature. On oh, the teasling one, though, is this another thing that just grows? Grows when you play artifacts. Okay. Uh. No, I've got to. I've got to get this bank buster out. Make these land drops. Made a land drop, that's good. Uh, are we greedy? Are we going to try and look for a, another land? Hmm. I think I'll, I'll, I'll grasp the pack leader. Okay, that's going to pump the wormlet. Oh, really seriously pump the wormlet. Wow. Uh, could just emperor the wormlet, I guess, and lose the, lose the emperor. We could <laughs> transmogrant's crown, sacrifice that, and kill the wormlet with a voltage surge. That doesn't seem great. We might have protection for it. We'll see. File a... Okay. I'll be back. 
Okay, I think I can draw a card now. It's taken a while, but we've drawn a card. Uh, we've, okay, we can sort of build up the board a little bit. We've got the El Asil Core. Death Touch, the Defiler. Great, Orphan Ward Oddity. Oh, great. Another creature. Loving this. Uh, so, six trample, eleven. And dead, I guess. So, my only out there. Sacrifice Bank Buster in response to Kadama to blow up the Evil World Oddity. I was thinking I, I should be doing something, but I didn't react quick enough. Uh, so, yeah, I think, unfortunately, that is that. But I uh, definitely misplayed by using that Infernal Grasp way too early. Need to, u need to use my instance during my opponent's turns. And if he had the protection spell for one green, I mean, it he could have cast it in my turn, so didn't make any odds. So this doesn't look so good. This is risky because we've we haven't got anything we can play. I think we'll we'll take a mulligan here. Keep that one. Uh, which one goes back? The cheap removal spell or the more expensive ones? Let's keep a cheap one. At and a three cost one, I think. Send that back. So, yeah, this is where uh, we just got outplayed. He, he managed to play a one three which we can't kill. On this, well, at least not on this turn. So he gets to untap. Okay. Oh, it's a tap land. Okay. Uh, right, voltage search for two, and then right of oblivion, sacrificing a lasso core. That's the most hardcore way to go. I think we'll that no, we'll use the Legions to Ashes because it's one of my expensive removal spells on Ledger Shredder before it gets out of control. No attacks, and we can deal with this guy on the ground. Or we force him to use a removal spell. Oh, 
Oh, he'll, he'll probably have first strike. Foot that the yeah the first strike spell. Okay, he's got sure up. I don't think that quite help uh, helps him. Well, it means he does an extra couple of points of damage, I guess. Let's go for the fable. Okay, Haughty Jin, fair enough. One mana to defend it with. Okay, my turn. We can discard Right of Oblivion, I believe. And the planes. Yeah. Okay. Interesting situation. I think we swing in first. We've got two. Just picked up another nice. Instant speed removal spell. Uh, we could blow him up now. Voltage surge, sacking the treasure. Seems good to me. And then cut down in response to slip out the back. So, yeah, we actually had slightly better instant removal there. Okay, here's Haughty Gen number two. All right. And is it going to be like the last one we ran into where he's got the second? Uh, protection spell. He's already used two protection spells. Do they always have two protection spells in hand? Um, okay, let's swing in. Not blocking. Uh, now, soul transfer potentially would get a creature back from a graveyard. So I get some value out of soul transfer. It worked. He did not have another protection spell. That's nice. Okay, and I want to play the Blood Tithe Harvester. Forty Jin, number three. Okay. So, right of oblivion, sacking a blood token, I guess. Wait. Um. No. Copy the harvester. Harvester the Jin. That's some value. Uh, I think we've had some good fortune in uh, midweek magic. I feel like uh, just uh, 
paying that good fortune forward, so we're just going to get into this game and concede. And I'm just hoping that guy was, you know, playing this to get to get his wins. And he wasn't too worried about sort of playing a game of magic. Uh, we're going to move on from this and just play a bit of standard. But let's figure out if I've got a sideboard first before we go into best of three. It's my second Curse of Hospitality. Yes, indeed we do. Right. So we'll see how this measures up in best of three. We might have a find we have a rough time of it, but um, I'm ready. I think I'll give it two best of three matches and see how we do. So the good news is we can cast cut down from the opening hand. If we get one more mana, we can cast wedding announcement and fuel right of oblivion. My opponent is going first. I will draw one more card. So we're going to, we are going to keep this. We're going to try very hard to draw a third land. Obscure a storefront. I respect that. Uh, ooh. Takanuma. Um, okay, now let's let's play the Sanctum. We drew a third land, so I'm I'm absolutely delighted. It means I can cast Wedding Announcement. Another storefront. Uh, now we'll play Takanuma. There was an option. You could you could play Takanuma on turn one, and then you've got cut down to answer your opponent. What do they play? So. Um, I like wedding announcement here first before the f before I play the fables. So I do have a fourth land to play. I'm not this not quite at the stage where I can discard land. I could discard right of oblivion. Oh, he's gone. Right, he gambled as well. Unfortunately, he, his gamble has not paid off. Um, let's rush out on Archangel of Wrath and just take him down. He might not. We might not have another go for the throat. We'll see. Yes, I did see this card. Uh, right, I guess I didn't have anything he could hit. But that's gathered. He's gathered more information now. Let's see. Uh, we'll go ahead and fable. So with any luck, this should be win number four. But we can also see if we can win the match. So he had, uh, he was using Obscura thingies, but he only got swamps with them, which is very interesting. So he's maybe using it, it's a mono black deck and he's using it to thin out the deck. Um, don't really know what he's playing. It's quite hard to uh, figure out what to do here.
but yeah, mono black destroy evil is going to be good for killing Shieldred. Uh, and on balance, I think I go. I'll go for a bank buster. Um, do I take one cut down out? Yeah. Three lands. Uh, we're very happy to see that. Uh, yeah, let's let's keep this. We've got a very expensive card. Maybe, but maybe this is a, another chance to actually see it in action. Um, right, we'll play the Sunlit Marsh here. So yes, he is Esper mid-range. I guess. Isn't that interesting? First game, he didn't want anything other than swamps. Maybe he had a Liliana in the hand and he needed two black sources. Uh, right, we want to play an untapped land and play another a bank buster. Got a removal spell, we've got a paragon, another bank buster. I guess we're gonna just be drawing a load of cards. Uh Grand Portal, do we go for it or not? Because it comes into play untapped. I'm going to go for it. Uh, we need double white. But uh, we need double red as well. Eventually we need double red. We've got Xander's Lounge. Uh, right, I think we'll go next. And end the turn. Okay, it is a shieldred. Right. Legions to Ashes is not instant speed, unfortunately. There's the fable. Okie doke, let's draw a card and get punished. Um, take that out. And do we want to play the Zanus Lounge? Yeah, I think we're building up to over the top, so we will. Okay. He did not have shielded number two. That is uh, a blessing. Okay, I think we can play Fable here. Oh, n right. What's this? Exile top three cards for your library in a face down power. And then the next three. Ha! I love it. Okay. Top three. And then cards four to six. <laughs> he chooses, he turns one of them face up. He gets to keep one of them. And I choose. Do I give him Takanuma, Invoke Despair, Liliana of the Veil, or do I give him the scary, scary unknown pile? Which he, he knows what, what's in that pile, by the way. Right, the good news here... Um, no shield red. Uh, so we'll choose the devil we know. He gets to play a land and invoke to spare me. But I still got my bank busters. Let's uh
That's my uh, yeah, my bank busters are my uh, my compensation. Okay, in fact, bank buster. I'm gonna draw two cards. Seems good. Good chance of drawing a land. And then we can just play over the top. And then we then at least we've played it. We could build up more stuff on the board. Oh, he's got Disdainful Stroke in his deck and Spell Pierce. That's really obnoxious. Okay, El Asil Core gets discarded. Spell Pierce discarded. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. He's like, he might have another one in hand. But he's got two in the graveyard now, by the way. He hasn't seen this card. Well, let's draw. So... We we are scared now about counter spells. Okay, over to my turn. And then the, the my question actually is what what can I get away with? I. without spending any mana, I can crew a bank buster with a pilot and send it at Liliana. He might want to defend Liliana and spend mana to do so. That is my fondest hope. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that you got me. He's dead. Now, how much mana do I have? Seven. Eight. So I'm not playing around spell pierce number three if I try and do this. I only have three permanents in play. It's not the best thing. Uh, on the other hand, I can Angel of... If I go Archangel of Wrath, just blow up Liliana, right? I can obviously do that. I don't have to play over the top, okay? Right. Uh, any target. Yeah. Okay, kick that. Kick that. I've not really done much Archangel of Wrathing, so this is this is quite fun, really. Watch it. A delay. Nothing more. Uh. We could draw a card off Bank Buster or play Transmogrant's Crown now without attaching it. Eh, let's end the turn. Painful Quandary, that's nasty. Okay, okay. Okay, I will draw a card off this. I would quite like to draw a land. Okay, it's a tap land. Right, the Oblivion definitely gets pretty expensive here. Uh, are we sacrificing a pilot? 
Are we a... Obviously we can't cast Transmogrant's Crown. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to do this. Blow up Painful Quandary, Sacrifice a Pilot. And discard a card, of course. Or pay a 5 life. I don't want to keep my cards, I'm going to pay 5 life. Right, uh, we're going to play... Oh, how about Transmogrant's Crown? Whip it onto the Archangel. Try and get my five life back. Ah, you see, we did it again. I made my opponent concede before I could play over the top. This might be why this this is not a good card. But that's my best, uh, the best performance I've got out of um, Archangel of Wrath, I'd have to say. That was quite fun. I'm sure Over the Top will have its day um, it, in another game, but you know, you don't want to play an Over the Top for when you've got three permanents. It's not very impressive. You, you might be lucky and get something off the top, but yeah. I think we'll, uh, what I'd like to do is, you know, make a, pa well, obviously the idea is you make a, uh, I was going to say a deck full of power stones. You can't cast it using power stones. You're going to make a deck with lots of non-land permanents. So, um, treasures and blood tokens and things would probably be the easiest things to make. Could even work in the uh, enchantments deck. Something with artifact or something with artifacts on enchantments that just stick around. Anyway, that was that, that was quite fun. So yeah, that that deck still works quite well. We've we've made a few changes. Uh, we tried Citizens Crowbar. Which, uh, I think this is a fantastic card in Rite of Oblivion decks. I'd, I'd kind of like to play four of these if I'm playing Rite of Oblivion. But I thought, let's, let's not go crazy. Let's just try one of them. Uh, let's keep an El Asil Core and let's try a Razor Lash Transmogrant. Uh, I think we saw this guy. I think he got exiled, of course. There are still loads of exile effects flying around. Uh, we just saw the Transmogrant's Crown at um, yeah, getting the uh, Archangel of Wrath to 5-4 was enough to persuade my opponent to concede. And the threat of drawing a card if he, uh, if he did get removal for it. So it's turned into a qu quite a card draw focus deck. We've got Reckon a Bank Buster. I think we brought in a, a another Bank Buster. Because uh, we weren't sure what to do after game one. Uh, yeah, Right of Oblivion on things like uh, Haughty Chin. Feels quite risky. Sacrificing permanents. We got punished um, against the first set of the first blue tempo deck, but then we beat the is it tempo deck, which obviously has it, it split between red and blue. So it's it, he's trying to play more threats, more burn spells. Doesn't quite have as as many protection spells. So we, I think he played out three haughty gins and we managed to kill all of them. Which was I've got to say, very satisfying indeed. 
Uh, yeah, we've got the, the usual suspects. Blood Tithe Harvester. Best uncommon creature in the game, in standard, I guess. Um, works very well with Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Uh, I recently got my third wedding announcement, so it's nice to play all three of these in the deck. I uh, just got the one Graveyard Trespasser still, but uh, it's pretty powerful. We tried Legions to Ashes alongside Soul Transfer, so we've got the more expensive removal spell that can exile. And uh, they both give a bit of extra value as well. It, with Soul Transfer in particular, and if you're trying to take out that Haughty Djinn, if you've managed to obviously get your artifact and enchantment, maybe with a... Maybe your Goblin Shaman made a treasure. Then you can... Uh, it doesn't fizzle when they protect their djinn. You still get the second half of it. You still get to return a... Um, basically uh, do a raised dead on one of your creatures. Which is nice. So I think, uh, yeah, Soul Transfer is definitely fantastic with Fable of the Mirror Breaker and pretty good against Haughty Gens. At least in the respect it gives you uh, value. Uh, yeah. So Archangel of Wrath, we saw a lot of. That was pretty fantastic. Uh, Sarah Paragon, another really good value card. They've got they've got to blow it up. One Wandering Emperor. We're all quite familiar with by now. Uh, Liaza, we didn't get to see. And we were so close to playing over the top, but on two occasions. And my opponent just had to concede both times, but never mind. But yeah. I'm going to say now, this is probably not the deck for over the top. We are making a lot of stuff, but then we're sacrificing it. Quite often. Uh, there is probably going to be a better deck for, for this card. Definitely. Anyway, I think... Uh, yeah, quick look at the sideboard there. Of course, we only played the one best of three match, but... Um, yeah, I think uh, if you, I've got Lantern, Lantern of the Lost in here for graveyard removal, but um, obviously if you've got the Runaway Hearse, that is a much, much better and more aggressive option. Right, anyway, I think that is a video. Uh, thanks for watching.